Hi. Um, can you hear me? Uh, I'm just starting the recording on. Um, here we go. Hi, everyone. Um, it's Kate Greaves, and um, I'm doing an hours long recording on Awakening Together today. Uh, and I was just listening to Jackie. Thanks, Jackie. Um, for the introduction and uh, first of all just deep gratitude for everyone from Awakening Together for um, volunteering and being there for for everybody. Um, I really appreciate it and uh, Jackie was just mentioning donations for the website and I thought I'd put it out as well because I'm recording this for my YouTube um this channel so if anyone sees this that hasn't gone to the website it's awakening hyphen together.org and you can donate to um help keep these um facilities alive for for basically paying it forward um so that what you've got out of something that you've heard um, you can allow these things to keep going so people in mines in the future can be assisted to awaken um, by these facilities there's costs involved in this dream world <laughs> and uh, this is what plays out so we need to um, if you feel guided to help out that's really beautiful because i'm uh, after i've done my prayer <clears throat> i'm going to read uh, something today's topic is called um, true prayer in abundance so it's it's lovely that uh, we're talking about donating to this wonderful uh, website and keep the sanctuary alive and vibrant and popular in our minds. <laughs> <clears throat> so uh, let me just start with a with a prayer to the Holy Spirit. So if you'd like to close your eyes and join me in this prayer and just let your shoulders Sink down, just let the muscles that you're sitting with just relax. Just let your toes relax and let your fingers relax. Just let everything, let your lips and the muscles in your face, just relax. Holy Spirit, you are the voice of God. You are the right mind. You are the universal inspiration. You know everything that needs to be known. You are the love, the perfect, pure love that is mind training us back to your mind. You are the one that speaks to us, that guides us. When we allow you in, I surrender to you today. I let you be in charge of my day, my evening, my life. And when I do step in, 
and choose another way. I choose my conditioned mind. All I need to do in that moment is stop and pause. not react and just quietly choose you, ask you to be my eyes and my ears. Please lead me from this beautiful love, this heart opening love this love that loves, it just loves and loves and loves. It's as gentle as a kitten. Amen. I just got tears in my eyes then because <laughs> I was just feeling so much love. <laughs> and um, joining with God and we've got to remember that God is just perfect love. Just going to turn my heater off. <clears throat> God, God is just this. Uh, he just it says in the course God is, and it's just an experience of joining with God in this perfect, perfect love. Beyond all thought, where thought ceases and we just join in this place in our mind. We go within and we have this experience of just surrendering and then joining. And basically, I've talked already about the topic, true prayer is basically the prayer. It's not praying for anything. True prayer is joining, is joining with God, joining with the Holy Spirit. And true prayer, prayer in abundance is that the abundance is when you're filled with this love. And there's no words. And I remember when I was reading Ramana's book, um, Be As You Are, he said he liked to give his teachings in silence. So he would just sit with the other person and he would just sit. And let's sit together. And beyond the words was the joining. And I guess that's what um, what some masters did. And I know there's some uh, some teachers they do eye gazing, and I think I would have loved to have sat with Ramana and just gazed into his eyes and just been silent, just sat there for half an hour and just gazed into his beautiful, beautiful, deep, gentle loving eyes and just felt, feel myself falling into that. And I'm just imagining, you know, doing that with Muji. I'm just imagining doing that in my mind <laughs> and just sitting there and just sitting in this deep silence. And just joining him 
in a cross mind beyond words. And that's um, one of the things that I was going to recommend today, if you're listening and are interested, <clears throat> based on this topic, True Prayer and Abundance, is this, what I'm reading out of today, is Gary Renard's book, uh, Disappearance of the Universe. And my on my journey, I got Gary's book in about March 2013 and it was instrumental in my surrendering, understanding or realising some of these truths. So I was being led very gently by spirit to um, the books that I was to read and everybody's journey is different. Spirit will guide you to read the books you need to read and guide you to listen to the teachers you need to listen to. And everyone's paths look a little different. So don't compare. Just follow your path. And even if someone, if your friends in your groups say they don't resonate with a particular teacher, then you do, you just keep following that. And sometimes someone will recommend a teacher to you and you don't resonate with it. Follow that. Don't think that you need to follow someone just because someone else likes them. And I found that really when I've done that, it's worked out for me. Although I was with a friend the other day and he said uh, that he was listening to Muji and he said, and then he saw a lot of women around Muji and he said I got turned off him because his mind projected onto Muji that Muji was um, the people were like adoring Muji in that sense of like an egoic um, adoring he said oh no he just just too many young women around Muji <clears throat> I'm not, I just don't like that. And I said to him, normally I would never ever um, point out someone else's projections. That's not my job. And I generally won't even question them. Um, it never enters my mind, I just listen. And I know that the Holy Spirit's in charge. But he did say later, I was talking about how I love Muji and how I sort of see him as probably the closest to the living Christ that you could have here now. And I remember him saying one day in one of his talks that... Um, that Maybe the mind that is closest to Christ hasn't yet been born. And like, the, like there's a teacher of teachers yet to come. And I had never thought of that before, that there might be a mind coming that is so clear and it's so just a pure, pure, clear vessel for us. And then I thought, I'm listening to him. <laughs> and so as lots of other people, he's got, he's reaching thousands and thousands. And um, 
you know, we don't even need to get on a plane and go to an ashram like we used to like we used to do many years ago without the internet. You know, we've got these live satsangs. Um, we've got this awakening together 24-7. We've got so much available to us that comes to us. We've got a smartphone that we carry around. We can put our earphones in and we can just click on a YouTube clip. We've got awakening, awakened teachers at our fingertips these days. You, you can listen during your lunch hour at work. Um, you can listen every single moment. You don't have to stop your normal life. Um, well, you don't have to go to India. <laughs> like they used to do the Beatles going to India. And, and I, look, I'm sure that's a beautiful experience and I do fear one day that I might do something like that. Um, on my journey, I've never really gone anywhere. <laughs> I've just stayed in my little house in Melbourne, Australia, and everything's come to me. And I got guided that way. Every time I wanted to go somewhere, the guidance would come in, no, you're staying there. And it's a possibility that I may not have come back to Australia had I had left because uh, I know there's a lot going on in Sedona. I think I would have been in India. I would have got caught up in that, possibly. Who knows? Um, but isn't it just amazing? Someone's just uh, written as a comment, it is amazing. And it is. We now don't have to go anywhere. And um, I'm just remembering a quote from... The Bible, I think, now I know I'm going to get this wrong because I don't really read the Bible, <laughs> the New Testament. And, but I did hear someone, and I can be, could be totally wrong, and I'm happy to be wrong. Um, Jesus said something about um, this, there's something in the Bible about how, how will it come and I'm not sure exactly what they were talking about, whether they were talking about his second coming or whether they were talking about the Holy Spirit. And he said um, something about it being coming across the earth, like um, being really fast across the earth. There was something in terms of something really fast going around the world. And a few people have said, that he was talking about the internet, <laughs> which 2,000 years ago could not have been imagined, I imagine. And as I'm saying that, I'm realising that time's all happening now. So it's all happening <laughs> in this moment. But we're talking about the timeline, I guess, in the dream. <laughs> and... All we have to know is what we're doing now. So where our minds have been woken up gently um, by the Holy Spirit, by the voice of God, we're just gently being um, awakened to this love. And really that's all it is. It's um, awakening to the love within, and it is within. So we're asked to go into our mind, go back to um, like Ramana and Muji. They, they'll sort of talk and their method or path is to drop away anything that's not you. So you know, they'll say drop your beliefs, um, drop everything about who you are. And that's really um, what the course is doing because it's asking you to hold no grievances. Um, and he's asking us to look at the meaning we've put on everything. Um, someone's just said he's probably talking about within the one mind. Yes. Yeah, we're in the one mind. Um, 
thank you for that. And um, so I'll get back to the topic, True Prayer and Abundance, and I'll read a couple of quotes out of Disappearance of the Universe, and they are from The Course in Miracles. I once asked you to sell all you have and give to the poor and follow me. This is what I meant. If you have no investment in anything in the world, you can teach the poor where their treasure is. The poor are merely those who have invested wrongly and they are poor indeed. Now, he's not talking about money. He's talking, I once asked you to sell all you have and give to the poor and follow me. He's asking us to sell all our beliefs, all our grievances and give them away. Give to the poor. Um, he's asking us to, um, I guess, in a way, it it can be taken as your possessions. But he, what he means here is to, which is part of awakening, and I talked about this last week as well, is simplifying your life. So what you'll find as you start to um, become more joined with God in your mind and you see the valueless in a lot of things of the material world. <clears throat> Excuse me, I've just got to do something. I've got to lift my dog up onto the bed. <laughs> She's got to make a little noise otherwise to try to get up there. So I'm helping. <laughs> I'm already getting Nora's helping. Um, so what what Jesus is asking us to do here he, is it can be applied to the materialistic things because in a way that will happen. I think everybody on this journey that to awakening, eventually part of that journey is you will just see all the things that you value before, the little trinkets, all the little things that you've valued. You'll just look at them and just not, they'll just become valueless. Um, you'll see all the meaning that you gave them. And there will be an unsettling period as you undo that value because this could be things that you've valued for a very long time um, and that just is slowly, slowly being undone. And you might give, I was instructed to give um, a lot of donations. I was instructed, I think I mentioned one other talk, I gave $4,000 to someone on the internet um, that was starting a business up and um, I did it. So it was so joyful and it was so beautiful and it was for me, that was for me. That lesson was to see that I would be taken care of. So Jesus was carefully, carefully um, getting me to give away but he was also giving, getting me to give away my beliefs. Um, and this is what I meant, if you have no investment in anything in this world. So in other words, I didn't have any investment in anything in this world. So I ended up selling my um, house. Um, and you may not, that doesn't mean that you're going to lose your house just because you're on a, on, a, um, on, the, on a path, a spiritual path. Um, I've now been guided to rent a property and just open that up uh, for people to come and stay with me for a little while. And um, I felt guided to like offer one-on-one -on -one weekends and they'll be very reasonably priced because I've also been guided into a job as a carer. Um, now I used to be an accountant 
And this job actually came to me. I didn't do anything. A friend of mine is a carer for road accident victims. And she just messaged me one day and she said, I've put your name down, Kate. Um, and it felt right. Uh, she said, I've put your name down with the agency. And believe it or not, um, here in Australia, it's probably the only thing that you don't need a course for to do. I needed to do my first aid certificate and get a police check, um, which is your criminal record check, which I've done. And it all happened really easily. The first aid course uh, appeared within two days. Um, very quick, everything just happened and this is the effortlessness that happens when you start working with God's plan and you get out of the way. So I have no idea what I'm going to do next and this is the trusting of in God's plan. So I've been um, guided back to work and so the money will be used for... Um, getting maintaining a property so that I can open it up for other people to come and stay with me and we can go we can meditate together and we can talk about the course of miracles um, concepts together we can join with a purpose so there'll be purposeful weekends um, and I'm going to put those up on my website and that's what I feel guided to do um, more sort of one-on-one -on -one and one-on-two. So it's a three-bedroom property. I'll be there on my own. If Kevin's able to get his visa to come out, we're still working on his visa. Um, it's taken a while. <clears throat> Nothing's ever going wrong. So we both know that he's where he needs to be and I'm where I need to be. And we don't plan in terms of we've given the plans. So um, this is living in absolute trust. Um, yes, I do still have some money left in the bank from selling my property, but um, most other minds would say, oh, you have to buy a place. Um, and I'm just completely free of how that money is going to be used. I don't, if I'm asked to donate, all that money to somebody or something or some organisation, I'll follow my guidance. At the moment, it feels to use it for um, what I've been asked to do. So um, I have no investment in anything in this world. I don't have um, physically any investment and I don't have any investment in my mind. So. It has to come from your mind first and then your behaviour will follow. So as you, as I was talking about before, as we look at the meaning we've given everything, um, we start, the meaning changes and we're asked not to value the valueless. So what we have to do is we have to see that everything in this world of duality is going to die, it's going to crumble, it's going to fall apart. He talks about um, valuing a little piece of dust. So we need to see that with what we're putting, if we're putting any value on the body and we're idolising, we're putting as an idol before God, um, he's telling us we need to shift our... Um, minds back to only God, um, have our mind completely dedicated and committed in to living in God, living with God and just being God in every moment. Um, so the poor are merely those who have invested wrongly and they are poor indeed. So what happens, he's talking about the poor is you could imagine like a really rich, like a billionaire. That's what he's talking about. He's poor as far as Jesus is concerned because he's invested in dust. So he, so this um, billionaire 
And let's just explore that a little bit because it's really interesting. It really is good to let your mind um, wander or look purposely with Jesus, with what we have idols. So this world, most minds in this world um, idolise money, owning a lot of property, owning a lot of, um, you know, like um, fast cars, things like that, or just, um, just, you know, overseas travel, anything. Um, I'm not assuming you do. I'm just saying I did. Yes, goodies. <laughs> Lots of goodies. <laughs> and the media is drumming that subtly into your mind all the time through TV, films. Um, and the message is always, you don't have enough now, but if you get enough, you'll be happy. So it's always, always, always the message is there's something outside you to make you happy. So what happens is these, um, and, we as, and we as egos aspire to that. Uh, it's very subtle. And what we need to do is we need to train our minds with work with Jesus and the Holy Spirit to see the valueless, the, what we value, all these idols that we put before God, um, and even the body can be that. So um, the body, uh, really, once your mind is free, your body is just a communication device. It's just a, really an empty vessel to be used to communicate God's love and wisdom. And it'll be used by the Holy Spirit. So you basically surrender your body to be used by the Holy Spirit in, in, in any way. And um, you've got to be free of how that is. <laughs> so can you live in a mind that is free of where it's going to be, where its body's going to be in any moment? So, but we're very slowly trained. If you're getting any fear coming up about that, um, that's all right. We just, I've had people talk about um, that they're fearful of awakening because of my financial situation or that I'm a gypsy <laughs> and they don't want to have that. And I said, look, your path will be very different. But really, it's just what you need to do is just become free of your attachments. So um, very, very gently, Jesus will free you from all your attachments. And that doesn't mean those things aren't still there. It just means that you're not attached to them being that way or having them. Um, and that's freedom. So um, the billionaire um, that owns lots of money, probably runs big corporations. Jesus is telling us that he is poor and he has invested wrongly. So he's invested in dust. So the buildings will crumble. If there's an earthquake, they'll fall down and he'll be upset. Um, if, he's, if, if anyone's invested in their body in, in terms of this is who I am on this body, the body will get sick, the body will get cut, the body will break. Um, if you've invested in the body, well, the body is on its demise. <laughs> so, so your mind, a mind that puts an idol as a body, um, you know, that has to put lotions and potions to keep it looking really young and is in, in, invested in that, that that's, that they are their body. Um, you're poor because you're going to suffer with your, you've invested wrongly. And um, if you've invested in a relationship, if, invest, if your mind's uh, got an attachment to your partner, staying with you, that your partner is a certain way with you, if your partner has to say certain things to you or give you certain things or act a certain way, you are poor. You have invested in the world. If you have no investments in anything in this world, you can teach the poor where their treasure is. And where is the treasure? 
the treasure is in your mind. It's your connection to God through your mind. So once you have that treasure, you really, you've got the abundance and it's got nothing to do with money or owning things. It's got to do with freedom. You are free in your mind. Does that include our health? Yes. Yes, we cannot be attached to being healthy. Um, we allow the body to be sick. And, in fact, I've, um, <clears throat> I've got a few friends that message me, a um, few people that I've come across on my journey on Facebook. And, um, and one of them, he's a French man, and he messages, he messaged me, We've been sort of message, messaging each other for maybe a year or more, maybe every, sometimes we go a couple of months without hearing from each other. And he, he sent me a message one day. I hadn't heard from him for a couple of months. And he said, I've got this really bad pain in my um, um, sort of, was it the solar plexus, just below the chest? Um, and I know another friend of mine that has that too. Uh, I used to get all my pain round my jaw and my neck. Uh, that, that fear radiates into your body in certain spots. That some people get it in their stomach and some people seem to get it in their solar plexus. And he said he's been practicing he's on a spiritual path he does a lot of meditation he's been practicing but he just said look i um <clears throat> i'm really trying to get rid of this pain and that sentence just showed me that he wanted to get rid of the pain so initially immediately i had um this byron katie saying came in which i use a lot if i have something come in <laughs> and it's just the best way. So I just said to him, for three days, say to yourself, I look forward to this pain. I look forward to this sickness. And actually, when you say it, you'll just start laughing. <laughs> it sounds so funny. Um, and what it does is it reverses the resistance to it. And... Um, it's wonderful, like um, if I've ever had a thought where I want people to understand me or I want people to be any way, I, I just say, oh, I look forward to them not understanding me. Um, I look forward to being misjudged. <laughs> I look forward to this pain in my solar, solar plexus. I, look for, I really look forward tomorrow when I wake up. I really look forward to having my migraine. and. Um, I've got a lady that, has, that suffers migraines and it's really good because what happens is our mind says, I don't want to be sick. I don't want to have this pain. I don't, oh, I just wish it'd go. And it seems to lighten up. So anyway, I said to him, just give it a go. Do it as an experiment because he thought, he said, I, I'm scared that's going to make it worse. And I said, well, just try it. It's three days out of your life. Just experiment with this. So um, uh, he said that after three days, he messaged me. <laughs> he said that it had lessened quite a bit. <laughs> and um, yeah, give it if you if you like. That's a really good um, little process. To I look forward to anything that you're resisting. You know, even um, um, someone being mean to you. Just say, I look forward to them being mean. I really, really look forward to that person being mean to me today. So if you're going to work and you have someone there, go with a joyful heart because what happens is it's some, I'm not sure exactly how it works, but it's undoing the resistance to it. Use it in conjunction with your other processes that I found that it's a very quick little thing and, I can't take, um, yeah, it's just someone's just, um, sorry, I've just got it, it's off the screen a bit, I can't see your name there. Oh, Reverend Hal, um, I believe, HS Hal, 
Um, he's just saying I don't have much, much of a problem with the mental aspect of pain, just the body. Um, well, all pain is mental. <clears throat> and that's, I'm not saying that, that comes from Jesus in the Course. He says every single pain that you have in your body is coming from your mind because the body is a projection from the mind. So if we're feeling pain in our body, there's a fear in our mind. Um, but sometimes it's really difficult to locate that fear. I found on my journey, the more I've undid or allowed the Holy Spirit to help me undo the fear in my mind, the harder it got to identify the fear. So I'd just have a general feeling of fear and I'd be like, I don't know what this is. So it got seemed to get towards the pointy end of the journey. Um, the fear can remain quite hidden and it's not always easy. Sometimes it'll be revealed. Um, but I find meditation very helpful to find out what is actually hiding, what the ego's hiding in your mind doesn't want you to see the fear. So if you get really quiet, and um, you allow, just allow everything to come up. So you might say, oh, okay, I've got, to, I've got to go on a trip this week and I'm scared about the air, airplane trip. I'm scared that I may not pack the right things. Just allow your mind to go into every single tiny little thing that you're scared about. Just bring it all up into your awareness. Just, just allow yourself to really see what your mind's holding and just hold a space for that and just say, okay, I'm worried about this, I'm scared about that, I'm worried that this might happen and that might happen and this person might do this and then just, just let the whole story come out, just let it all up. Um, that's another really good process. And then once you do that, you just give it all to the Holy Spirit. And... Um, they're generally all related back to the belief that you're a body. Uh, that's what I found in the end, that um, that was what was illuminating. They're all, all these worries, once you see the source of them, is um, they're related. They might, it might, when I say that, you might feel, oh, it doesn't feel like they're related back to a body, but if you actually really trace the thoughts back, they all go back to the, the body suffering or the body dying. Every single worry thought can be traced back to that. And, um, but um, for this particular little exercise, to get a really quick um, undo of it, just this little, I look forward to, to that. So if you're having difficulties with any other mind and you feel attacked, so oh, I look forward to being attacked. I look forward, uh, I had a, a boss that uh, treated me like I didn't know what I was doing in my job. And at that time I was quite proficient and um, she would never, she would treat me like I didn't know what I was doing. So I just said, oh, I look forward to her treating me like a five-year-old today. I look forward to her explaining in a lot of detail um, the simplest things. <laughs> I'm just laughing because <laughs> it's, um, you know, I mean, my ego just arced up so much about the way she was treating me at work and the Holy Spirit was saying, I'm, un I'm going to use this, Kate, to undo so much of your mind that um, is attached to um, your career and your title and your job status and I, I just said it's such a big inflated idea about myself <laughs> and I was put in a uh, put in a job where my manager wouldn't recognize any of that now generally in the world you just get in a big half and say oh yeah I'm leaving <laughs> she's not <laughs> she's not going to um, treat me the way I want to be treated but I was really ready to look at all my uh, idols and um, an idol was my um, sense of that I, that my job title <laughs> and who I was, who I thought I was. And that doesn't mean um, 
just because that gets undone doesn't mean you won't work as that. You see, it's not, we're not talking about, it's very easy to get confused to say, oh, well, if I do my, undo my attachment to being an accountant, I'll never work as an accountant again because I'll lose everything I know. No, you've still got all your um, abilities in whatever job you do, whatever job you're doing. They'll be used by the Holy Spirit, but they'll be used in just different ways. You'll be there um, working from love. So you won't be um, in your position doing whatever you're doing. Um, so the ego works to get love, uh, get a pat on the back, get recognition, get, you know, grandiosity, <laughs> that sort of thing. So I was just put in this great position where I was working what you'd probably call the boss from hell. <laughs> and I would come home and I had a flatmate at that time and I would just tell her, and all of it, first of all, I'd express all the ego stuff and I'd be calling her a bee and this, that and the other and then I'd just say, but, you know, I'm just getting mine trained out of this. <laughs> and part of that was just to say, you know, I look forward. I look forward and Holy Spirit said to me, go in there, keep going in there and when you are completely fine with her treating you like you're a five-year-old and know nothing, then your job's done. And I said, all right then. So I just kept going in there and I had to completely undo um, the idea that I knew anything. And basically we're getting trained back to that because um, it's freedom. If, if I don't need her to treat me in any way, I'm free. So the funny thing is, is that as you re release this resistance, it doesn't happen anymore. Um, not that you do it for that reason. You, you're getting, we're getting mind trained um, out of this. So it's a lot of fun. So I can share a lot of the fun things, <laughs> how things happened. And yeah, I've, um, for the people that don't know, I suffered uh, chronic fatigue, severe depression um, through my suffering mind. <laughs> it was um, oh, so many attachments to so many things and the Holy Spirit just worked with me on each one. He guided me and I just, he, he was just saying, right, this is the next project. <laughs> and it'd be around, you know, sometimes. Um, uh, he'd uh, he'd say, okay, so you've got some guilt uh, around being a grandmother or being a mother or you've got an attachment to your daughter treating you a certain way. There would be oh, a, a list a mile long of all the things that I was attached to and gently, gently he worked with each one and it wasn't ever that uh, you need to give them up what you need to do is you need to give your attachment up and that's a different thing. So um, also another thing that's just coming to mind that I might talk about as well is um, on my journey I listened to a few teachers about preferences and I had a Course in Miracles friend stay with me and she would say, Kate, you've got to have no preferences. Um, so <laughs> that was interesting trying to live with no preferences because, you know, like I, li I know how I like my coffee. I'm just going to think, talk about very simple things and I know how I like my cup of tea and I was trying to, um, you know, uh, have no sugar in my tea and, um, change things around, trying to undo my preferences. But what I was noticing that I was trying to dabble around with the material world and um, I realised that it's to do with your mind. It wasn't to do with the physicality. So I said, we were, we were talking a lot at that stage. Uh, I was very early in my journey and I said to her, look, I think it's just, um, um, you, you know, I think we can have preferences. And um, so what I came to see as we were discussing these things is that it's okay to have preferences. So I can have a preference of how I like my coffee made, whether I like milk or black or sugar or no sugar, I can have that preference. I just can't be attached to it. So 
Um, uh, there's some funny stories I tell when I went to Canada for 10 weeks and Kevin, if he's listening, he'll laugh at this <laughs> because <laughs> in Australia we have a coffee culture that's very different to America and Canada. We're more, um, over here we're more in line with the Italian coffee. We have this, um, I don't know this, anyway, I had, because I'd never really travelled outside Australia, I didn't know that we had a different coffee culture. And I love coffee. And I have, uh, I'll, in Australia we go out for coffee all the time. It's a big culture. So when I went to Canada, um, and also I drink soy milk, so when I was over there and no, there was just like a lot of um, uh, automated coffee machines and I went to every coffee place <laughs> and I couldn't get anything that tasted anything like I had in Australia. It was all so different. I bought lots of coffees from the supermarket. I tried to make coffee. I couldn't find anything. And we did, it, uh, when we were on our tra going on a travel one day, we came to a little town and there was a little coffee, a coffee cafe, and they had Italian coffee in there. And I had, I had one. So in 10 weeks, I had one coffee. I had to be completely free of my preference. So I came to um, <laughs> hell saying they've been there, done that. And the most hilarious thing is, that I met a Canadian out here and I was talking, he was, he was on his travels uh, and he said to me, uh, I was talking, you know, he, him and his wife were travelling around and I, was, I met them and he said, oh, my God, where can I get a decent coffee here? And I laughed and laughed and laughed and I said, yeah, it's whatever you get used to. <laughs> so he hated our coffee. Um, and um, he couldn't find, and of course it's very expensive here because of the way it's made and the coffee beans, I guess, because, you know, our coffee's, um, at the moment, we're paying $5.50 a cup. Um, and it was much, much cheaper in Canada. And I didn't really go to America. I, I flew through the airport. Um, so I really can't comment, but Kevin did say that uh, the coffee in Canada is very similar to American. So if you are ever coming out here, I'll just give you the warning that coffee's different. But what I'm basically pointing to is that, yes, I can have a preference, but I had to completely not be attached to that. And so um, I ended up drinking a lot more water and there was a particular coffee that I was able to find that was, it was okay. And I just, I think that's what you do is you just let things go. Um, but I can't help but say the minute I got off the plane back into Australia, I just headed straight to a coffee shop and bought my first coffee. <laughs> I just went, yay. <laughs> and, um, and that's all right. But I wasn't. I did, I did find myself um, getting a little annoyed one day when I was over there and I thought, I could see, this is an attachment, Kate. There's an attachment you didn't even know you had. And so I just offered that up to the Holy Spirit. And I'd be su in suffering. I would have suffered for 10 weeks if I was attached to something. And these are the smallest, smallest, littlest of idols, these tiny little things that we have to be free of. So um, that's um, so true prayer. Just to recap, it's uh, nearly time to finish. So just to this, this is uh, true prayer in abundance. So I'm abundant when I am with God in my mind. And the other thing I'll just quickly mention is Gary Renard has a um, a. A meditation on YouTube if you search for true prayer Gary Renard it's a 10-minute meditation and I also wanted to talk today which I've run out of time uh, today's topic is true prayer and abundance um, that when you do this uh, meditation where you join with God um, which I did at the beginning of the hour um, where you just uh, join with God in your mind in silence. You don't even need to say any words, just, just go within. But um, as I said, Gary Renard's 
got a YouTube clip and that if you did that every day, um, morning and night for a month, what happens is as your mind clears, you get inspiration. You get the inspiring ideas from the Holy Spirit that help you with anything you need. So all you need to do is offer up um, uh, everything to the Holy Spirit and just uh, trust in your guidance. And it, because what happens, our ego mind always tries to work out the answer and it's very, very limited. So any issue that you're finding in your life now, the Holy Spirit has the answer. And um, so this meditation is a way to free your mind that you're trying to get the answer and you're trying to figure it out. And so what it does is it allows the inspiration to come through. <clears throat> and I've, I've been using this technique for many years. I may not use exactly what Gary does. I just join directly with God. I meditate most days and part of that meditation is quietening my mind and just sinking into this deep, deep peace. Another is a real joining with God and it's a song and it carries through for the rest of the day and it's a song, being in a song. It's a love song to God. But if you're not used to um, this, you need to practice. It gets easy as you go along. So it is going to be, uh, or it could be, difficult to do this. Um, and someone recommended it to me um, to do it for 30 days and uh, listen to the meditation and purposely join with God, put a purpose to and say, I love you, God. I love you, God. I love you, God and just join and it's uh, abstract you'll get just get a really beautiful feeling yes yeah true prayer by gary renard um so it's um it's a helpful tool if you feel um from in mentioning it if it feels like it's coming into your mind that you'd like to do that that's the Holy Spirit just prompting you along that it would be something helpful for you. So in the back of A Course in Miracles, it talks about every morning, as soon as you wake up and every night, just before you go to sleep, joining with God. Um, and that's a way to do it. If you want to do Gary Renard's True Prayer, that's the focus. So it's, um, it's working in with that. So I've got two minutes to go. <clears throat> and I always like to read a little... Um, prayer at the end. Um, so this is in lesson 329. I have already chosen what you will. So that's beautiful. I choose what you will. So God, I choose what you will. That's lovely. Father, I thought I wandered from your will, defied it, broke its laws, and interposed the second will more powerful than yours. Yet what I am in truth is but your will, extending and extending. That's beautiful. This am I, and this will never change. As you are one, so am I one with you. And this I cho choose in my creation, when my will became forever one with yours. That choice was made for all eternity. It cannot change and be in opposition to itself. Father, my will is yours and I am safe, untroubled and serene in endless joy because it is your will that it be so. Ah, that's just beautiful. That just, you know, and I am safe, untroubled and serene in endless joy because it is your will that it be so. Oh, God just loves us and we just joining with God is just this beautiful love. So I'll finish now and I just thought I'll just say, Michael, bye. I love you, I honour you and I bless you as your Christ self. Thank you and I'll hand the mic back over to Ken. Have a lovely day. And lovely evening. Bye-bye.
Sorry.